We continue with our Holy Bible reading to request divine union, part 75, with Three Kingdoms, chapter 6. Solomon constructs the temple. In the 440th year after the children of Israel came out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the second month, the king issued a command and they put great costly stones into the foundation of the house. These stones were not touched by any axe. The sons of Solomon cut them, and the sons of Hiram placed them. In the fourth year, he laid the foundation of the Lord's house in the month Nisan, the second month. In the eleventh year, in the month Bul, that is the eighth month, the house was completed, completed according to his every word and his every mandate. Now the house King Solomon built for the Lord was 60 cubits in length, 20 cubits wide, and 25 cubits in height. The vestibule in front of the sanctuary of the house was 20 cubits long across the width of the house, and the width of the vestibule extended 10 cubits from the front of the house. He built the house and completed it. He made hidden windows from which to look from the house. Against the wall of the temple he placed beams all around, against the walls of the temple and all around the sanctuary, an inner sanctuary, he also made side chambers all around it. The lowest side chamber was five cubits wide, wide, the middle was six cubits, and the third was seven cubits wide, for he made a space around the outside of the temple, so the support beams would not be fastened into the walls of the temple. Then the temple was being when the temple was being built, it was built with stones finished at the quarry, so no hammer or axe or any iron tool was heard in the temple while it was being built. The doorway for the lower side chamber was on the right side of the temple. They went up the spiraled stairway stairs into the middle story and from the middle story to the third. So he built the temple and finished it and he gave the temple a ceiling with beams and boards of cedar. He built the bonding of the superstructure to the foundation throughout the entire temple, each five cubits high. They were attached to the temple with cedar beams. The Holy of Holies. Then he framed the inside walls of the temple with cedar boards. From the floor to the temple and ceiling, he paneled the inside with wood, holding it together with wood from within, and he covered the floor of the temple with planks of pine. Then he built the 20 cubit room at the rear of the temple from floor to ceiling beams. With cedar boards, he built it inside in the inner sanctuary as the Holy of Holies. The temple sanctuary was 40 cubits long in front. He prepared the inner sanctuary inside the temple to set the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord there. The inner sanctuary was 20 cubits long, 20 cubits wide, and 20 cubits high. He overlaid it with pure gold and made an altar at the front of the shrine, and he overlaid it with pure gold. He overlaid the whole temple with gold until he finished gilding the whole temple. Holy Images Inside the inner sanctuary, he made two cherubim standing majestically, each ten cubits high. One wing of the cherubim was five cubits, and the other wing of the cherubim five cubits. It was ten cubits from the tip of one wing to the tip of the other. The other cherubim was ten cubits. Both cherubims were of the same size and shape. The height of one cherubim was ten cubits, and so was the other cherubim. Then he set both cherubim inside the inner room, and they stretched out the wings of the cherubim to so the wing of the one touched one wall, and the wing of the other cherubim touched the other wall. Their wings touched each other in the middle of the room. He also overlaid the cherubim with gold. He then carved all the walls of the temple all around, both the inner and outer sanctuaries with carved figures of cherubim and palm trees. He overlaid the floor of the temple with gold, both the inner and outer sanctuaries. For the entrance of the inner sanctuary, he made doors of juniper wood and lintel, and doorposts were one-fifth of the wall. The two doors were of pine wood, and he carved on them figures of cherubim, palm trees, and opened flowers, and overlaid them with gold. The gold went down over the cherubim and the palm trees. For the door of the sanctuary, he also made doorposts of juniper wood, one-fourth of the wall, and the two doors were of pine, two panels compromised one folding door, and two panels compromised the other folding door. He then carved cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers on them, and overlaid the figures in relief with gold. He built the inner court with three rows of hewn stone and a row of cedar beams. 
He built the curtain of the courtyard of the porch of the house at the front of the temple. The skill of Hiram, chapter 7. Now King Solomon sent and brought Hiram from Tyre. He was the son of a widow from the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyre, a bronze worker. He was filled with skill, understanding, and knowledge in working with all kinds of bronze work. So he was brought to King Solomon and did all his work. Two bronze pillars. He cast two pillars for the porch of the house, each one 18 cubits high, and a line of 14 cubits measured the circumference of each, and the thickness was four fingers to the hollow portion, and the second pillar was similar. Then he made two capitals of cast bronze to set on the tops of the pillars. The height of one capital was five cubits and the height of the other five cubits. He made two latest works to cover the capitals on top of the pillars, a, a latest work for one capital and a latest work for the other capital. And he made a hang, hanging work, two rows of cast copper pomegranates, a hanging work row upon row, and he did the same for the other capital. And he set up the pillars by the vestibule of the temple, and he set up the pillar on the right and called it Jakin, and he set up the pillar on the left and called it Boaz. The capitals on the pillars in the hall were in the shape of lilies, four cubits high. There was a roof on both pillars, and beyond the sides was a capital, one beam in thickness. A large pond. He made a sea of cast bronze, ten cubits from one brim to the other. It was completely round. It was five cubits high and thirty cubits round around the circumference. Below its brim were supports encircled it all around, ten cubits high, all, the way, all around, to hold up the sea. Its mouth was as the mouth of a drinking vessel, a lily blossom, and it was a handbreadth in thickness. There were twelve oxen under the sea. Three looked towards the north, three looked towards the west, three looked towards the south, and three looked towards the east. All their back parts pointed inward, and the sea was set upon them. The bases carts of bronze. He also made ten bases of bronze. Each has five cubits long, four cubits wide, six cubits high. It was the design of the bases. They had panels, and the panels were between the reliefs. The reliefs were lions, oxen, and cherubim. Above and below the lions and oxen were spaces for a hanging work. Every base had four bronze wheels, and the attachment to the, the wash basins were bronze, with four parts to them, and supports under each wash basin, and axles of bronze, and the height of one weight of one wheel was a cubit and a half. The workmanship of the wheels was like the workmanship of the chariot wheel. Their axle pins, their rims, their spokes, and their hubs were all cast of bronze. There were four supports, the four corners of each base. Its supports were part of the base itself. On the top of the base, at the height of, a, of half a cubit, it was perfectly round. And on the top of the base, its axles and its panels were of the same casting. On its panels, he engraved cherubim, lions, and palm trees wherever there was a clear space on each, and they went all around. Thus he made the ten bases. There was one pattern and one measure in all of them. Then he made ten wash basins of bronze, each wash basin containing forty baths. On each of the ten bases was a wash basin. He put five bases on the right side of the house and five on the left side of the house. He set the sea on the right side of the house towards the, south, the southeast. The Temple Furnishings Hiram made the wash basin, the, sho the shovels, and the bowls. So Hiram finished doing all the work he was to do for, the king, for King Solomon for the house of the Lord. The two pillars, the two bowl-shaped capitals on top of the two pillars, the two latest works covering the two bowl-shaped capitals on top of the pillars, 400 pomegranates for the two latest works, two rows of pomegranates for each latest work to cover the two bowl-shaped capitals on top of the pillars, the ten bases and the ten wash basins on the bases, one sea and twelve oxen under the sea, the pots, the shovels, and all the equipment. Hiram made all these articles for King Solomon for the house of the Lord. All the works of Hiram that Hir the works Hiram made for the king, the forty-eight pillars of the king's house, and the house of the Lord were entirely of bronze. There was no measure of the bronze from which he made all these works in such great number. There was no limit to the measure of the bronze. In the plain of Jordan, the king had them cast in clay molds between Sukkoth and Seir. 
Thus Solomon dedicated all the furnishings he made for the house of the Lord, the altar of gold, the table on which was showbre the showbread also of gold, the lampstands of pure gold, five on the right side and five on the left in front of the inner sanctuary, with the oil containers, the lamps and the wick trimmers of gold, the doorways, the nails, the bowls, the dishes, and the censers of pure gold and the hinges of gold, both for the doors in the inner room, that is the Holy of Holies, and for the doors of the main hall of the temple. So all the work King Solomon did for the Lord's house was finished, and Solomon brought in the holy things of his father David, and all the holy things of Solomon, the silver and gold furnishings, he put them in the treasuries of the Lord's house. Solomon's residence. Now Solomon took 13 years to build his own house. His, he built his house with wood of Lebanon. Its length was 100 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits, with three rows of cedar pillars and cedar beams, beams in the pillars. He, uh, he roofed the house with cedar above the beams on 45 pillars, 15 in a row. There were three beams and a joint upon a joint, three times over. All the doorways and doorposts had rectangular frames, and the windows were opposite one another in three tiers. He also made the porch of pillars. It was 15 cubits long and 13 cubits wide. In the front of them was a portico with pillars, and a canopy was in front of them. Then he made a porch for the throne and hall of the judgment, where he might judge. The house where he dwelt had one courtyard that had access to these. A similar workmanship, Solomon also made a house across from his porch for Pharaoh's daughter, whom he had taken as wife. All these things were made out of costly stones and had been fastened at the spaces inside and at the foundations up to the eaves and outside as far as the great courtyard but the foundation was laid with huge, costly stones, ten cubits and eight cubits high, every, uh, very costly according to measure, uncut and with, with cedars. For the great courtyard round about, there were three rows uncut and a row fastened with cedar, and Solomon completed his whole house. Chapter 8. The Ark is Brought to the Temple. Twenty-eight years later, to, sorry, twenty years later, when Solomon finished the building of the house of the Lord and his own house, King Solomon assembled all the elder, elders of Israel in Zion to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from the city of David, which is in Zion. In the mouth of Ethanim, the priest took up the Ark and the Tabernacle of Testimony and all the holy furnishings in the Tabernacle of Meeting. King Solomon and all Israel were before the Ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen without number. Then the priest brought in the ark to its place into the inner sanctuary of the temple to the Holy of Holies under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread their two wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim overshadowed the ark and the holy things. The holy staves extended to the ends of the poles, so the ends of the poles could be seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen from outside. Nothing was in the ark except the two stone tablets, the tablets of the covenant Moses put there at Horeb, and when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel after they came out of the land of Egypt. When the priest came out of the holy place, the cloud filled the house, and the priest could not stand there ministering because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house. Solomon speaks to the people. Then the king turned around and blessed the whole assembly of Israel while all the assembly of Israel was standing. He said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel today, who spoke with his mouth about my father David and fulfilled it with his hand, saying, Since the day I brought my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city from any tribe of Israel in which to build a house for my name to be there, but I chose for my name to be in Jerusalem, and I chose David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of my my father David to build a temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to David, my father, since it was in your heart to build a temple for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. But you shall not build a temple, but your son who will come from your body, he shall build a temple for my name. So the Lord fulfilled his word which he spoke, and I fill the position of my father David and sit on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised. And I have built a temple for the name of the Lord of God of Israel. 
There I made a place for the ark which contains the covenant of the Lord, which he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Solomon's Dedication Prayer Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord, in the presence of the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands towards heaven. And he said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below, who keep your covenant and your mercy with your servant, who walks before you with all his heart. You have kept what you, pr you promised your servant David, my father. You have, been, you have both spoken with your mouth and fulfilled it with your hand as today. Now, O Lord God of Israel, keep what you promised your servant David, my father, saying, You shall not fail to have a man sit before me on the throne of Israel, so long as your people guard and keep their ways to walk before me as you walk before me. So now, O Lord God of Israel, let the word of be confirmed you spoke to your servant David, my father. But will God indeed dwell with men on earth? If the if the heaven and the if uh, if the heaven and the heaven of heaven will not be sufficient for you, how much less even this temple I build for your name? Yet, O Lord God of Israel, regard my prayer, which your servant is praying before you today, that your eyes may be open towards this temple day and night, towards the place of which you said, My name shall be there, to hear the prayer your the prayer your servant prays in this place day and night. You will hear the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray towards this place. You will hear in your dwelling place in heaven. You will be merciful. When anyone sins against his neighbor, or if he takes up an oath that he should swear and comes and redeems himself before your altar in this temple, you will hear in heaven and act and judge your people Israel condemning the wicked, bringing his way on his own head, and justifying the righteous and bringing to him according to his righteousness. When your people Israel are defeated before their enemies because they sinned against you, and when they turn back to you and confess your name and pray and make supplication to you in this house, then you will hear in heaven and be propitious to the sins of your people Israel, and you will bring them back to the land you gave their fathers. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, and when they pray towards this place and confess your name and turn from their sins whenever they humble themselves, you will hear from heaven and be propitious of the sins of your servant and your people Israel, that you may teach them the good way in which to walk and send rain on the land you gave your people as an inheritance. When there is famine in the land, when there is death, when there is burning locusts or, br or blight, when their enemy besieges them in one of their cities, Whatever plague or affliction there is, whatever prayer and supplication shall be offered by any man, as each one might know the plague of his heart, and will spread out his hands towards this house, you will hear in heaven from, from your dwelling place, and be propitious to act. And you will give to everyone according to all his ways, whose heart you know, for you alone know the heart of all the children of men, so they will fear you all the days they live in the land which you gave to our fathers." Even the foreigner who is not of your people, when he comes and prays in this temple, you will hear in heaven from your dwelling place and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you. This so all people will know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel. They will know your name is called upon in this house I built. When your people go out to battle against their enemies, wherever you send them, and when they pray in the name of the Lord towards the city you chose, and the temple I built to your name, then you will hear their prayer and supplication in heaven. You will make a righteous judgment for them when they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you become angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, and they are taken captive in the land of the enemy far or near. Yet when they turn their hearts in the land where they are carried captive and repent and make supplication to you in the land of the, their captivity, saying, we have sinned and done wrong, and they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemy who led them away captive, and pray to you towards their land you gave to their fathers, the city you chose, and the temple I built for your name. Then you will hear in heaven from your dwelling place, and you will be propitious in their unrighteousness in which they sinned against you, and in all their transgressions by which they broke faith with you. And you will grant them compassion before those who took them captive, and they will have compassion on them, for they are your people and your inheritance, 
whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, out of the midst of the iron furnace. Let your eyes and your ears be open to their supplication, of your servant and the supplication of your people Israel, to hear them about everything whenever they call to you. For you, O Lord and Master, separated them from all the peoples of the earth to be your inheritance, as you said in your, to your, by your servant Moses when you brought our fathers out of Egypt. Then Solomon said concerning the house he had finished building, The Lord made known the sun in heaven. He spoke to those dwelling in darkness. Build my house, a house of splendor for yourself, to dwell in newness. Behold, is this not written in the book of the Ode? Solomon blesses the people. When Solomon finished praying all his prayer and supplication to the Lord, he rose up from before the altar of the Lord after kneeling on his knees with his hands spread to heaven. When, then he stood up and blessed the whole assembly of Israel with a loud voice and said, Blessed be the Lord this day, who gave rest to his people Israel, just as he promised. Not one word has failed of all his good words he spoke through his servant Moses. May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. May he not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts to himself, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes that he commanded our fathers. May these words which I have made supplications before the Lord stand near the Lord our God day and night to maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel as each day may require, that all the people of the earth may know the Lord is, go is God and therefore and there is no other. Let your heart therefore be perfect to the Lord our God that you walk piously in his statutes and keep his commandments as today. Solomon consecrates the temple. Then the king and all the children of Israel offered sacrifices before the Lord. King Solomon made a sacrifice of peace offering the offering it and offered it to the Lord twenty two thousand bulls and one hundred twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. On that day the king consecrated the middle of the court that was in front of the house of the Lord. There he offered burnt offerings, grain offerings, and the fat of the peace offerings, because the bronze altar before the Lord was too small to receive the burnt offerings and the peace offerings. On that day Solomon made a feast, and all Israel was with him, a great assembly from the entrance of Hamath to the river of Egypt, before the Lord our God in the house he built, eating, drinking, and rejoicing before the Lord our God for seven days. On the eighth day he sent the people away and blessed them, each one went to his tent, joyful and with a good heart for all the good the Lord did for his servant David and for Israel, his people. Chapter 9. God appears again to Solomon. Now when Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord and the king's house and everything Solomon wanted to do, the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time as he appeared to him at Gibeon. The Lord said to him, I heard your prayer and the supplication you made before me. I have done for you everything in your prayer. I consecrated this house you built to place my name there forever, and my eyes and my heart will be there all the days. Now if you walk before me as your father David walked, with integrity of heart and in uprightness, and you do everything I commanded him, and keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever. As I said to David your father, saying, There shall not fall there shall not fail a man to be ruler in Israel. But if you or your sons turn from me and do not keep my commandments and my statutes Moses set before me, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land I gave them. I will cast them from my sight. This house which I made holy by my name, Israel, will be destroyed and will become but prattle among the peoples. As for this Exalted house, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and will hiss, hiss and say, Why did the Lord do this to this land and to this house? Then they will answer, Because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, and they embraced other gods and worshipped and served them. That is why the Lord brought all this calamity on them. Then Solomon brought the daughter of Pharaoh from the city of David into the house he built for himself in those days. The Pact with Hiram. Now twenty years later, after Solomon built the two houses, the house of the Lord and the king's house, 
Hiram, the king of Tyre, helped supply Solomon as much as he desired with cedar and pine and gold. Then King Solomon gave Hiram 20 cities in the land of Galilee. So Hiram went from Tyre to Galilee to see the cities Solomon gave him, but they were not pleasing to him. He said, what are these cities you gave me, my brother? So he called them frontier cities to this day. Then Hiram sent Solomon 120 talents of gold. King Solomon also built a fleet of ships at Ezion Geber near Elat, Elath on the shore of the sea in the land of Edom. Then Hiram sent his servants with the fleet, seamen who knew the sea, to work with the servants of Solomon. They came to Ophir and acquired 120 talents of gold from there and brought it to King Solomon. And now we continue with 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Greeting, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God which is at Corinth with all the saints who are uh, in all Achaia. Achaia is the province where Corinth, the city of Corinth is uh, located. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Sharing, suffering, sharing comfort. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Now if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope for you is steadfast, because we know that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so also you will partake in the consolation. Sharing an adversary by prayer. For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we have the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves but in God, who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and does deliver us, in whom we trust that he will still deliver us, you also helping to get together in prayer for us, that thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf, for the gift granted to us through many. Paul's Pure Conscience Towards Corinth for our boasting in, is this, the testimony of our conscience that we conducted ourselves in the world in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by grace of God, and more abundantly towards you. For we are not writing any other things to you than what you read or understand. Now I trust you will understand even to the end, as you also have understood us in part, that we are your boast, as you also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. Paul does not vacillate. And in this confidence I intended to come to you before that you might have a second benefit, to pass by way of you to Macedonia, to come again from Macedonia to you, and be helped by you on my way to Judea. Therefore, when I was planning this, did I do it lightly? Or the things I plan, do I plan according to the flesh, that with me there should be yes, yes, and no, no? But as God is faithful, our word to you was not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who is preaching among you by us, by me, Silvanus and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him was yes. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us in God, who also has sealed us and given us a spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Paul is merciful. Moreover, I call God as witness against my soul that to spare you I came no more to Corinth, not that we have dominion over your faith, but our fellow worshipers, or our fellow workers for your joy, for by faith you stand. Chapter 2. But I determined this within myself, that I would not come again to you in sorrow. For if I make you sorrowful, then who is he who makes me glad but the one who is made sorrowful by me? 
And I wrote this very thing to you, lest when I come, I should have sorrow over those from whom I ought to have joy, having confidence in you that all that my joy is the joy of you all. For out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote to you with many tears, not that you should be grieved, but that you might know the love which I have so abundantly for you. Restore the penitent offender. But if anyone has caused grief, grief, he has not grieved me, but all of you to some extent, not to be too severe. This punishment which was inflicted by the majority is inflicted for such a man, so that, on the contrary, you ought rather to forgive and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one be swallowed up with too much sorrow. Therefore I urge you to reaffirm your love to him, for to this end I also write that I might put you to the test whether you are obedient in all things. Now whom you forever forgive anything, I also forgive. For if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. God triumphs in his apostles. Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened to me by the Lord. I had no rest in my spirit because I did not find Titus, my brother, but taking my leave of them, I departed for Macedonia. Now thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one we are the aroma of death leading to death, and to the other the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not, as so many, peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God we speak in the spirit of God in Christ. We speak in the sight of God in Christ. And we'll continue with chapter 3 of 2 Corinthians tomorrow. God bless you and thank you for your support. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.